great out there against Ronnie. Uh, yeah, he's from London. I'm sure I'll, I might have a little bit of support. Uh, Mum and Dad are coming down with girlfriends. So I'll have three people on my side. But, uh, no, it'll be just such a great final. Your dream come true to play Ronnie in the final at his uh, home ground. We have respect for each other and, you know, he's a fantastic player and, um, you know, just made the best man win tomorrow and, you know, hopefully we can both be winners at the end of the day because, you know, it's, that's, that's the most important thing is that we enjoy ourselves and, uh, you know, it's nice to be here. You know, we're, we're, we're two lucky people to be able to be competing in this final because there's a, a lot of other snooker players that ain't and, and they would like to be, so, you know, just try and enjoy and savour the moment. O'Sullivan's a marginal favourite to capture the Masters title after beating Hunter only two weeks ago in the Welsh Open quarter-finals. Will you welcome the brilliant young man with the golden cue, Paul Hunter! <laughs> the Essex Exocet, Ronnie O'Sullivan! Without further ado, to the action. Your commentators are Clive Everton, and John Virgo. All the best, Ron. Have a good time. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the final of the Masters. £100,000 to the winner, 50000 for the runner-up, but that's a side issue, because at the end of a player's career, the question he's asked is, what have you won in major titles? And this is major. O'Sullivan has won 28 of his 37 major finals. Hunter has won Thank you, ladies five and titles in all, including Thank you, two masters. Paul Hunter to break. Well, great excitement once again, and all those considered terrific break-off shot from Paul Hunter. It's difficult to see a pass back to the ball end for Ronnie. Had to be thinner than that to avoid the double kiss. Yes, it was a, an ambitious attempt to get the cue ball back to Bork. One. And that good break off and yielded a, an early opportunity for Paul Hunter. There'll be a lot of nerves, a lot of tension in the arm. Best way to get rid of them all is to get your hand on the table and start potting balls. Four. Five. Play for the pink. The, the red he'd like to play on, I think it's almost occupying the black spot. I think it must be because the pink spot isn't available and referee Jan Verhaas finding a place in a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. There you can see that red as well, he's occupying the black spot so he needs to get on that red 12. and pot in that red before he plays for the black <coughs> and he's a bit careless there he's short on the blue poses a problem should put this red of course 17 but the extra distance involved 
means he's got to take a little more care than if he was closer. 18. And uh, also, it was the positional element, and I think he's got straight on the blue this time. Yes, he doesn't appear to have the angle to play for that red. That's the red he'd like to play for, the one that's occupying the black spot. And he's too straight on the blue, so it's the brown. A lot tougher shot than the blue, this. We've mentioned many times, Clive, in commentary this week about Paul Hunter and that, well... For him, horrendous loss he had against Ken Doherty in the semi-final World Championship last spring. And I think if he could win this tournament, that was a fortuitous kiss off the yellow, but if he could win this tournament, he'd lay a few goals to rest in his mind. 22. I think that's so, John. Although I think that uh, he's pretty easy in his mind about that anyway. Oh, it would be easy about that. It would only just go, but uh, it either goes or not. Yes, it looked as though it went, didn't it? Just caught the wide jaw. So he didn't make the most of that opportunity. One. Can't get to the pink, can he? He wants to, because the black's a thin cut. Well, surely he can't hit enough of the pink to pot it. It's difficult to say, because sometimes, if you put a bit of side on the cue ball, but look at that pink, you wouldn't think he could hit enough of it. If you... If he put lots of right hand side on, now he's playing the black. Put too thin. Ronnie O'Sullivan won. First frame. Not an easy shot. Played to open the bunch. Fortunately for O'Sullivan, he didn't. So there's no short range red on. Yeah, funny enough, he played to open the bunch, but there wasn't a lot of conviction in the shot, was there? I think if this had been the third or fourth frame, he'd have really gone for that black ball out. He's not left the red he played, which was the only one he could leave, he thought, if he missed it. Left-handed for that simple roll into the bunch. Yes, to take up your point, John, about uh, the world semi-final, in which he led Ken Doherty 15-9, lost 17-16. Uh, I asked Hunter about it uh, yesterday. I said, uh, how, long did it, how long did it take you to get over that? He said, oh, the day after, I'd forgotten about it. And I said, really? And he looked me straight in the eye and said, yes, until somebody reminds me about it. Well, thank goodness he can't hear the commentary. And that is the thing. I mean, you can put it out of your own mind, but people will keep reminding you if you keep losing. That's why I say this is a very important match, I feel, for Paul Hunter in the context of his career. If he can win it, they'll get him right back on track future world champion, there's no doubt about that. But what a test of his mettle today, playing Ronnie O'Sullivan, who this week and last week in the Welsh Open has proved that his mind's right, his game's right, and when he's in that type of form, almost unbeatable. Looks very settled in himself. I've known him win tournaments when he's been uh, in a black depression, but uh, there's no doubt about it. it. This is an easier game when uh, you're feeling right. <coughs> well, 
Ronnie looking for the safety off the red near the right hand side of the table. We're trying to get the cue ball. If you could get it middle of the top cushion, it wouldn't be an easy safety shot for Paul Hunter. By coming over this side, if Paul isn't tempted by the pot on the red into the right middle, he can just roll into that little cluster of four and not leave anything. Whereas if he'd have had it in the middle of the top cushion, the pink would have stopped him hitting this little cluster and it could have caused problems. But he's an attacking player, is Paul. Will he be tempted by the red to the right centre? It's very risky. No. Well, that could never have been the right shot for me. The shot there was to just roll into that little cluster. He was hitting those reds, he wasn't certain where they were going to finish and one of them has landed plumb over the left middle. You could never be certain where they were going to go. I'm very surprised he played that. And it was also very difficult to get the cue ball back to the cushion. And in fact he left it several inches short. No difficulty for O'Sullivan's queuing here. The only problem is that he doesn't have an entirely natural run to position from the easy red. Yes, it's one of those situations and it always seems to happen. The red's a lovely spread, but the key shot will be the first one. Pot the red, get good on the colour. He's trusted to look there. One. And he's not had much. He's on nothing easy. He's looked at the green here for this left corner pocket. This is a pressure shot so early. Oh, the tremendous pot. <laughs> Belief, fully committed. Four. What a chance he's got now in this all-important first frame. I don't care whether it's best of 19. There's nothing better than get that first frame on the board. Big chance for Ronnie O'Sullivan, this. Five. You predicted, John, that the first positional shot would be key. And uh, the way the balls are set, there's every reason to suppose that you're right. Black not ideally situated, but uh, I don't believe that'll necessarily stop him making a frame-winning effort here. Yes, yeah, probably the, the key to winning the frame would be that red just by the pink. That one there, it doesn't look as Eleven. though it's possible in any pocket. Now, OK, under normal circumstances, with these reds in the open, if he was to get pink and black, he wouldn't need that red. But it appears the way the reds are situated, he's going to take quite 16. a few bought colours here. And I think that's why Ronnie was studying the scoreboard so long before he played that red. Seventeen, And I think he, he would love to get the black into play. That's the scoreboard the player sees in the arena. And he was just trying to work out if he concentrated on the blue. So let's work it out now. If he pops the blue here, you go one point in front. Let's forget about the red that's by the pink for a moment. There's one, two, three, four, five reds. Five blues 22. is 30 points. That'll put him 31 points in front. If he concentrates on blues, he's going to need the red near the pink. 23. Didn't get a straight on the blue there, as he intended.
28. This red to the Borg pocket makes that pocket available for the red next to the green. 29. Didn't play his positional shot from that red though, as he intended. Jan Verhaas is this afternoon's referee. Comes from Rotterdam, Feyenoord supporter. Thirty-four. Thirty-eight. Ronnie, looking at the scoreboard again. It's not going to change, Ronnie. You're going to need that awkward red by the pink which doesn't appear to be able to go anywhere. He's now having a look to see if it's possible to get position on the pink. Of course, if he did that, he'd release the red. That is the key to this first frame. Okay. 39. to notice that uh, this isn't an automatic clinch for O'Sullivan. Well, we'll know now 32. whether he thinks the pink's available. He's got an angle on this red to play for the pink. If he thinks he can see enough of the pink to pot it. 43. Can he see enough of it? He could, so the hope that this red could save Paul Hunter is now 49. gone, just the red required. 50. So he'll be ruining that bad safety shot he played, Paul Hunter. He should have played a containing safety rather than an aggressive one. He left the red on for Ronnie, 56. and Ronnie has done the rest very well. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 56. 56 break guarantees O'Sullivan the opening frame barring snookers, but Hunter plays on. Two snookers needed to tie. And he had a reasonable chance to screw in behind the brown there, but failed to take it. Two in the first frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And this time Hunter does stay in his chair. O'Sullivan leads by the frame to nil. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, frame two. Thank you. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. O'Sullivan said yesterday that um, he regarded playing here this week as a challenge to how deeply he could get into himself, how deeply he could be at one with himself, ignoring all the outside influences.
one. Good pot. Obviously hoping for a thinner contact on the, the other reds, which he knew he was going to run into. Caught it thick, no easy colour. And there's a red over the right corner, threatening, should he not pot the colour or get it safe. Decision. He can pot the pink, he can pot the blue. But it's very, very risky. Yellow. Trying to use one. the blue as the cover for this red over the corner. And he has covered the red. And now Ronnie's got to do the same. Well, he may have covered it. I don't know if there's a possibility of Paul. He's just coming around to have a look now to see whether he could come off cushion first. I don't think he can just get through to the potting angle. He's looking at the line there. So he's going to play cushion first. Expect him to get this. He'll settle for that. Perfect on the pink. Always need a bit of luck in those situations. And he had plenty. in the first frame when going back for the blue didn't get the right side of it he's got the right side here and worth the risk of going into them because it was a great chance of him bringing the pink into play 13 because at this moment in time or that moment in time the pink and black were tied up played it well 14 now this cue ball needs to stop He's run too far. So decision time now for Paul. Does he play the blue into the right center or the far, far right corner? Right center, we've got a good line. As long as it slows down, we've played it perfect. Good shot. Still no possibility 90. of pink or black, so it's back up for the blue. 20. Nice angle this time. Neither pink nor black in play yet. Again, tried to 25. develop something. I can't see a pot on here unless he's. I was thinking he maybe had gone into a plant situation, but it doesn't look like it. I think that's end of break. He's only playing the safety, he's just a little bit concerned coming thin off this red, where the red's going to go. He doesn't want to knock anything towards the right corner. Paul 
Hunter, 25. It's always very difficult when the pink and black are out of commission to make a frame winning contribution. He tried hard to bring the pink into play, just couldn't manage it. Principally, and possibly exclusively a safety. <coughs> this bout of safety play has developed the pink into a possible position for one corner pocket if someone can get in pretty good but He's not got the snooker. I think Paul Hunter may even have the red just to the right of the pink spot. Could play the pot here. Cue ball going back to the balk end. Well, he deliberately overcut it. Interesting part of the frame this, you feel if Paul Hunter can get another chance, he'll win it. And Ronnie fighting for that chance to get right back in the frame. Well, it looked obvious that he was going to cannon the second red there. Perhaps he thought that the cannon on the second red would be thin and the cue ball would get back to Borg. Well, I think he just caught it too thick and he's very lucky, having caught it too thick, that he's not left anything easy on for Paul Hunter. He's trying to get the snooker behind the green here. Not quite. Not quite, but as I say, he could feel a little bit miffed there that he wasn't left a pot on, or an easy one. That's brought the black into play, and kept Hunter at distance. As I said before, if Ronnie got a chance, he could get right back in the frame because I thought it was going to be very difficult to win it in one visit. Not now. Pink and black in the open. Pressure on this shot. And Paul Hunter, he's got to catch this just right. He's playing the safety. <coughs> Too thin. He's left the red. You see it, you can get past the black, and if you can get nicely on a colour, this is a good chance for Ronnie. Comes to the table 26 points behind. Played a good safety shot on his last visit, the visit before. He was looking to be able to take a chance like this. Really, with this red, you just play for any colour. One. Well, I think he's on the green. Well, the pink just goes. Green's the better option. So he's just got to judge the line. He's got to try and avoid particularly a kiss on the brown when...
play in this green and he'll be aware of that. I'd be surprised if he does catch the brown. Four. Hunter knows this danger now. Five. Eleven. <coughs> Eighteen. Nineteen. Tremendous arena, this Wembley Conference Centre. Twenty-five. There you are. Quite a distance away, the spectators, but the atmosphere is marvellous. I think that's one of the things. I think if any of you have never been to a snooker match, it's it's got a unique atmosphere of its own, mainly by virtue of the fact you have to sit there, and sometimes you're frightened to breathe. You don't want to make a noise. <coughs> Thirty-three. Thirty-four. O'Sullivan can score enough to win the frame without needing the awkward red on the right-hand side cushion. <coughs> Forty-one. Yes, and there's no reason why he won't win it. It's perfect on this red. Forty-two. And two reds nicely placed. Looks like the second frame's going to run it. A little bit of fortune in it. He played a poor safety shot. 49. And was very lucky not to leave Paul Hunter a chance when Paul Hunter was 26 nil in front. And you felt if Paul would have got 50. one more chance, he'd have clinched the frame. But then Ronnie's next safety shot really put Paul in trouble. He couldn't cope with it. And that resulted in this, well, what looks like a frame winning visit. You see it, 31 ahead, 43 57. remaining. Pot the red, 32 ahead. So he needs a colour. 58. And the pink now to go 38 points in front with only 35 left on the table. Knowledgeable applause from those who appreciate that uh, that's put Hunter at the snooker required stage. Yeah, it's just one snooker required. Ronnie, you'd like this to go in. If it goes in, that's frame over. A good shot. 65. Seventy-one. Seventy-three. Not enough balls left to, to make a century. Seventy-four. 
76. To add to O'Sullivan's total of uh, 349 in his 11 year professional career. 80. He holds second place in the number of centuries made. Behind Stephen Hanford on 632, but in the here and now, that's an 80 break from Ronnie O'Sullivan and a 2-0 lead. A flying start from the 1995 Masters champion. Here in the third, O'Sullivan leads by eight points to nil. Hunter in play. Great pot. What a pot that was, clean as a whistle. He was forced into that. It's amazing how many times you see it when a player plays a shot and you don't like the position of it. I mean, obviously, Ronnie Eight. tried to play the snooker behind the green, but all you've got left is a pot. Nine. And you forced the man into the corner. Great pot, great chance. Sometimes if there's only one shot on, then your mind 16. is clear. There's no doubt at the back of your mind 17. about which shot uh, you should be playing. Well, I think the red just below the pink 24. is on to the left corner. That's the one he's played for. Now there's two reds in the middle of the table. I think it's risky now if you pot the black and try and go into them. Particularly those two reds, and there may be another red available into the right corner. The one on the extreme left of that cluster of six. So no need to run into anything here. Just pot the ball, pick off the loose reds. As I say, I think this is a very, very important frame for Paul Hunter. He's 2 0 down. He's not done a lot wrong. Played a bad safety shot in the first. Didn't get much chance in the last frame. If the one on the left of the that cluster of six doesn't go to the right corner, then and it doesn't. Thirty-nine. But he's picking them off nicely. But he's going to have to disturb something to win the frame at this visit. Forty-four. I suppose that red, the end red I was talking about, available into the right corner, it'd be available probably into the left centre. It's difficult. Forty-five. Played the screw for the black. It wasn't a situation where you could run through for the blue. You'd probably play for the red now into the left centre pocket. Forty-four points in front now. Fifty-two. So he needs red colour red. Fifty-three. He needs one more red and he's going to have to play the cannon to develop that red because it doesn't appear to be a red on. Big shot this. He's not perfect on this black. He's going to have to put a tracer left hand side to get the cannon. Well, that's unlucky. That's unlucky. He looked Six. to have it absolutely perfect. Just caught this red full. If it had just caught it a fraction on the right-hand side, it would have been left with a dolly red into the left corner. He's 52 points in front, but there's still a possible 59 left. Can he risk taking this red on? That's one red for the frame. But Ronnie O'Sullivan waiting in the wings for any mistake. 
somewhat awkward queuing. Oh, but how well he queued it. What a pot that was. It will win the frame, and it deserves to win the frame. Absolutely tremendous. Striking down like that when you haven't got cue ball and object ball in your eye line. That was superb. 66. I said he'd done nothing wrong in this match so far. Sometimes you don't get much of a chance 67. to prove how well you're playing. He's showing us now, given the chance, what he can do. This has been a tremendous break from start to finish. 74. 75. 82. Chance of a century. Not as high as the one that Ronnie made last night against Jimmy White. That magnificent 83. 138 break. Which is in line for the £10,000 highest break price. But as I say, Paul Hunter. To get anywhere, you need that first step 19. on the ladder. And he's done it in style, this frame. He needed a frame quickly and badly. And couldn't have played this better. Don't go in the middle, please. Don't go in. 92. Ninety-five. So it looks like uh, the 88th century of Paul Hunter's career is coming up. Ninety-nine. One hundred and four. And how well he's taken them. 110. 117 and the frame. A superb clearance of 117 from Paul Hunter. Reduces uh, his arrears to 2-1. A smashing break from Hunter, but O'Sullivan needed only 40 minutes to claim the next three frames with breaks of 86, 87 and 84 to forge 5 1 in front. Gentlemen, the final frame of the session. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Yes, and there's nothing better than uh, live sport. Settle when down, it's played please, now. In this kind of fashion, whatever the sport is, when you see somebody playing it at their very best. It's a pleasure to watch, and this is a pleasure to watch O'Sullivan in this kind of form. Paul Hunter, as I've had said in the studio, clearly has to win this frame to have any conceivable chance. And Ronnie, a pretty good break-off shot, but he's left a couple of tempters that Paul doesn't really want to have to take on. This is tough. This is very tough. Terrific shot. Absolutely terrific. Well, the crowd certainly enjoyed that. They want this high standard to continue. And I think they would like to see Thank Paul you. Hunter Let him concentrate now. Thank win you. this last frame of this session. Eight. He deserves to do it with a shot like that. Well, if he's 6-1 in front, that shot's hard enough. But to play that shot 6-1 behind the no. way Sullivan's playing took a lot of bottle. And as you rightly say, Dennis, was first class. Sixteen. Seventeen. There are a lot of Ronnie O'Sullivan supporters here in this 
capacity crowd at the Wembley Conference Centre, but the cheer Paul Hunter got when he knocked that long red in, I think they would like to see the Yorkshireman take this final frame of this session. 23. Twenty-four. Needs to screw back with a little touch of side here to get out on this red. If he screws back somewhere along the line, should be okay. Thirty-one. Only to the inch, Dennis, that one. This is a pack you must go into him from the blue. The uh, red is potable to the right of the pack, but if he gets an angle on here, we'll go right into that top of the pyramid red there. <coughs> Getting on the one red's no good to him here. He needs to win at one visit. He hit the red absolutely perfectly and deserves everything he gets from here. That was first class. Just watch the cue ball here. He had to hit this red full ball with screw to hold the white. He played it perfectly. In fact, 38. I think it's one of the best splits I've ever seen. Well, he's put every single red into a pot potable position. 38. Yes, it's key when you're playing this kind of shot. Hard ball is no good to you. And 44. that's the reason Stephen Hendry developed that shot, where you screw into that pyramid red to hold the white. Even if he kissed it half ball, he would have kept the white in the middle of the table. And this is just unbelievable, Snooker. This is the eighth frame. And the lowest break we've had was in the very, very first frame when both players were entitled to be a little bit nervous, trying to settle. There was only a 56 in that. 52. There's been a 70 or above in every single frame since. Look at the pot success rate, 93, 97. Unbelievable. Just shows you how tough it is, Dennis, to have a 93% success rate and 6-1 behind. It's a tough school. And look at that safety success rate, both at 88%. 58. Well, we haven't seen that much safety, have we? Yes, yeah, so and when we have, they've knocked a long one in. The way these both, both these players have played under normal circumstances, I'm sure that success rate would be up in the 90s as well. It's the fact that both players' long game has been first class. 59. But showing a terrific amount of character here, Paul Hunter. 6-1 down, and he's out there knocking these in as if he was 6-1 in front. Well, it took a century for him to win his only frame so far in this match. 64, 74 will be the target he's looking for at this break. But red colour to red. We'll give him that frame to make it 6-2, and still in with a slight chance. Sixty-five. Needs the colour, and it's not guaranteed. There's sixty-seven left on the table. The colour is not a certainty. That kiss on the blue was just about the worst kiss he could have got. He's going to risk the green. This is going to have to go in. If he misses it, you never know. Once again, a terrific round of applause from the crowd here. They knew the importance of that green. So it's going to be 6-2. So it's going to be plan B. And the pattern of this game is just incredible. 70 or above 76. in every frame by the first. When both players were nervous, 56 O'Sullivan made. 77. There's nothing better than live snooker when it's at this class. It's been a remarkable session of snooker. Ronnie's getting his bits and pieces together. He's got a file there. That's with the press onto the tip just to keep the chalk from slipping off it. 85. 
Yes, most players have a, a small file. <laughs> Ninety-two. Ninety-three. Uh, can he get the pink and the red to make a second century? Then somebody asked, how did you play, Paul? We'll have a couple of centuries. Ninety-nine. Lost the session 6-2. Doesn't sound quite fair, this. But that's the 100. case now. <laughs> He has to make a centre to win a frame. Cannot beat the highest break, of course. He's going to get a possible 1-3-4. 109. 112. Well, he deserved this frame. He deserved the century break. 121. It all started with a fantastic opening pot. And he deserved to win the frame from that. 127. Well, we've witnessed some good sessions here at the Masters at Wembley. This, for me, has been as good as anything we've seen. Two centuries from Hunter, 8-2 above in every frame, Thank bar you. two for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Both players leave the auditorium with a standing ovation. This standard has been superb. It's 6-2 O'Sullivan. The light at the end of the tunnel for Hunter, but his problems intensified when O'Sullivan cleared up from the last red to build a 7-2 lead. Here's the 10th frame. Can Hunter somehow turn the tide? O'Sullivan then, within uh, three frames of his second Masters title, nine years after he won his first at the age of 19. Yes, Clive, that just shows what a difficult tournament this has been to win. When you think someone of Ronnie's ability only having won it once, because you've got the top 16 players in the world here. Such a difficult tournament to win. Foul. No miss. Paul Hunter foot. Needed to be thin, but past the outside edge. This is a good length with the cue ball here. Perfect. Well, tomorrow's pictures will be uh, in some papers. The snappers hard at work. This could finish up behind the green. Got to be careful. He shouldn't really leave anything, but he doesn't want to hit it with any pace. Just gently into the reds. Would do. And I'm just wondering if he can see enough of the red for the middle pocket. Ronnie well, just didn't get exactly where he wanted it there. It must be very tight, though. Because if he can get to the potting angle, he could get onto the, the pink or black off this. Might just be able to see enough of it. He could. One.
seven. Should be able to avoid the reds and get onto the blue here. Eight. Thirteen. Fourteen. Now, is he going to go straight into the pink here? He'd have to hit the pink full ball if he wants to open the reds and clear the pink with quite a bit of pace. Hit it half ball. Needed a full ball contact on that pink. Nineteen. Just got to hit the pink there, full ball. Twenty. The hunter camp like that one. The long red keeps the break going. Yes, I think we all like that one. That was a terrific pot. And it's the sort of pot he knocked in. I think it was in the um, third frame when he was 2-0 behind and he made 117. He could really do with something like that now. Twenty-eight. Just that one red and he can stun the pink in and just come back past where the white is now. Thirty-four. But it's not easy now to split the reds. Thirty-five. It's so easy to stick on these. If you hit it full ball, go into the reds, hit full ball, you don't finish on anything. And you need to play with a lot of power here and hit it on the side slightly. He's only got a long red to go 41. at. 41. Always difficult when they're like this. 39. That's the only red he can have a go at. Uh, the one just to the right of the, the blue. That's the, the only possible pot. Hunter, 41. Too risky to attempt the long red. Yes, the sort of red you take on, Clive, if you're 7-2 in front. That's the... Ronnie Sullivan Camp, Ronnie's girlfriend Joe, and uh, on the left there, his mother Maria, giving us a wave. Oh, this is a careless one. He's overhit this quite a way. He hasn't made many mistakes in this match, uh, Ronnie a few little edgy shots at the start of this evening session but uh, still looks in terrific form One. six This is uh, the sort of position in which it would be very surprising if Hunter failed to clinch the frame. Seven. It's just a wee bit complicated with that black being tied up and I don't think the red behind the black pots because Paul had an angle 
on the previous shot, so it won't go that red. So he can't clear the black just yet. And the pink's a little bit awkward. Twelve. But there's the difference, 57, so... Thirteen. As long as he gets, I was just going to say, as long as he gets the right side of the blue, he can clinch the frame without worrying about pink and black. But he's left this straight. And maybe that bad contact caused that. Yeah, you can see the red jump there. That stopped the white from getting the other side of the blue, so... Longish red. 18. I mean, it would be a bit risky to try and get onto the pink there, but it's just as difficult to get up for the blue. Red and a colour needed. <sighs> well, he took the slightly oh, more 18. difficult pot because he couldn't get position off the easy pot. Anxious, anxious moments. Well, the Hunter camp would have appreciated better than anyone the necessity for Hunter to put away that frame-winning chance. All right, so the black was tied up. Pink slightly awkward, but should have done it really. Reds and blues. Anyway. No counter-attack from O'Sullivan. He just had to win this frame. It was essential. And he's going to win it. One. And as ever, the crowd know that that was... The Six. pot that left Ronnie needing a snooker. Seven. So we can safely assume that this frame is in the bag for the 25-year-old Yorkshireman. Thirteen. Fourteen. But he needed more than one bite at the cherry and uh, he's still got it all to do. Well, he had a chance in the opening frame 20 here this evening as well. Both players 21. were just a little bit edgy starting off. And he's not out of it yet by any means, Paul Hunter. 27. <laughs> <laughs> well, even the ref can lose his concentration sometimes. Paul Hunter, 27, and the frame. Hunter's won the frame. But he's still got it all to do. He still trails by seven frames to three. That was a useful step down the road to recovery, but as we rejoin play in the 11th frame, Hunter trails by 27 points. That's that One. shot he's played again with lots of bottom, which takes all the pace and prevents the cue ball from running away. Just He's striking right down at the bottom of it. It's what we call a drag shot. Eight. Nine. Hunter badly needs this frame and the other one before the mid-session interval to put some pressure on O'Sullivan. I think he's gone a wee bit far, but he'd, he'd like to have potted the black and left the white near the circle for the red, the back of the reds, but I don't think he can do that. That's why he's looking up at the uh, reds that are by the blue, but they're a little bit awkward, only available into the corner pockets. Well, that's where I had the circle previously, so he, he did play that with a lot of sides. 16. 
and potting that cleared the path for the red to the right of the three reds and pink. So. Twenty-four. Not straightforward because the pink's out of commission, the blue's awkward, those two reds just hampering it slightly. And has he got the angle to run through for the black? He might have to nudge the reds. Played it well, he's freed all three reds. That worked out very nicely for Paul Hunter. He really is such a good player under pressure. Fantastic 32. temperament, always has had. Thirty-three. Yeah, didn't we see it earlier in the week when he played some great stuff in the last uh, few frames to put out Mark Williams, the defending champion and also the world champion, 6-5. Thirty-nine. Forty six. Forty seven. We've got terrific respect for each other, both these players. Still looks very calm and collected, Ronnie, as he has done all week. Fifty three. Fifty four. about that red next to the blue. 58. It's only available in two corner pockets. 59. The other red out of commission near the middle pocket, so he's got to get behind this red when he pots the brown. It'll be a longish red he'll be looking at. Unless, oh, it passes the blue into the middle, so that's even better. 63. 64. And once again, Clive, a frame being won with one visit. Yes, uh, Dennis. And just taken this opportunity very nicely. 69. <laughs> 70. <laughs> and uh, could make a century with a clearance. Wouldn't that be amazing? He's 75. had a break of 117 and 127. 77. It would mean that he'd only won four frames and yet made three centuries. 80. Well, when he was 6-2 down against Fergal O'Brien a couple of seasons ago, he came out and he made, I think it was four centuries in six frames. 89. Yes, he's certainly capable of great flights of inspiration. And... Uh, 95. He's not out of this match yet. Yeah. One under and two and Paul Hunter has Paul won Hunter. two of the first three frames of the evening. 
to reduce his arrears to 7-4. There's no doubting that momentum is now an ally of Paul Hunter. Can he stay on the comeback trail here in frame 12? And this frame following exactly the same as the previous frame. The red going up early on at the other end of the table. Can he just get past the black to have a go at the pot into the middle? It's a very difficult one, but worth the risk because he wouldn't leave a great deal not quite I'm saying he wouldn't leave a great deal the fact he's committed himself to get onto the black has left Ronnie a longish red and Paul knows only too well that Ronnie O'Sullivan can be lethal with this type of shot One, easy to say with hindsight, but shouldn't Hunter have concentrated on leaving the cue ball on the cushion rather than attempt that very difficult red? Yeah, I think Paul maybe played the right shot, but I don't think he screwed the white back as far as he wanted. Eight. If he just had have screwed it a little bit more, he wouldn't have left the red quite as easy. Nine. Player back for the red to the right. Hasn't got a good angle to go into them. He'd love to go into them off this black, but he's just deciding whether... Well, he might just do... I thought he would have just played for that loose red and then waited for a better angle. Ronnie O'Sullivan, nine. He's looked just a little bit nervy this evening, Ronnie. Even though he took the opening frame, he's not as settled as he was this afternoon. And it's certainly very unusual to see him miss a black off the spot like that at any speed. I think one, one of the things that may be at the back of... O'Sullivan's mind, although uh, he would try and put it right out of his mind, is that in 1997 he was 8-4 up on Steve Davis in the final here and lost 10-8. If he could get red and get the black back onto its spot. Six. That would help the situation. Seven. Not a lot to do with the white. He'll leave that red to the right of the pink and reds. Fourteen. Fifteen. Now he might play to get back on that red to the right of the white because the reds look to be all covering each other. I'm not sure if he can get on one. If not, he, he can get for that loose red. Well, the one at the back, is he on it? Or has he gone a little bit too far? 22. It must be a little bit tight. Just a fraction too far. But he's still got the other one. Now, can he get on that red at the back of the little bunch this time? He travelled just a little bit too far previously. <coughs> 
perfect this time. 30. He'll bring another red into play. Maybe a few of them. That's 31. Opened. That's opened everything up. Wanted to go through a little bit further. Yes, this is just a, a little thinner on the black than he would like. Well, he needs a good shot here because he's going to have to get a cannon to hold himself up here. Otherwise, the white will run up towards the blue. He'd have to play it with a touch of side, but if he could get the cannon onto that red, that would keep him up at this end. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Well, this is fantastic stuff from Paul Hunter. Forty-six. Forty-seven, within sight of reducing his arrears to only two frames. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. It's the first two frames of this evening session <coughs> that the players haven't clinched a frame with one visit. All the other frames have been one on a single visit. And this Wembley Conference crowd know that they have got a match on their hands here now. 52 ahead. 61. Just a couple more pots. And Paul Hunter will 62. go to that mid-session interval. Just two frames behind. 68. 69. The crowd are absolutely loving this, but I detect a few signs of unease in O'Sullivan. The mid-session interval 74. comes at a good time for him, I think. Gives him time to Regroup mentally. Seventy-five. We've heard Paul say so many times how he loves playing here at Wembley. Eighty-two. There's not a lot of difference, is there, in the points scored now. But Ronnie's still two in front. 82, and the frame, Paul Hunter. Paul Hunter clinches the 12th frame with a break of 82. He's won three of the first four of the evening and has reduced Ronnie O'Sullivan's lead to 7-5. Frame 13 is going to be unlucky for one of them. A surprising mistake that from Ronnie. Caught the red much too thick. Much too thick. And I think the black may be on. It is on. So one. This is a tremendous chance. The only problem is, where does the black go after it's been potted? I think there's a red sitting on the black spot. No, well, it's not going to go on there, is it? So unless the pink spot's available, I think he'd prefer, if anything, it went on the brown spot. No room for it on the pink spot, so it's going to go on the brown spot, which doesn't help 
for brake building purposes. Okay, that's a nicely spread chance to get a useful lead in this frame now. Nine. Yes, ideally Paul would like to get that red off the black spot immediately to, and then try and get the black back on its spot because with the pink being out of commission virtually impossible to win the frame just from potting blues because eventually you're going to get the wrong side of the blue and struggle. Just looks like he's trying to clear a path now for the pink by getting rid of a couple of reds either side 14. of the pink. Fifteen. It's really high in the blue. Well, you, there you see what I'm talking about, trying to win the frame off the blue only. One mistake and you're struggling, and that's already a mistake. And where green and brown are, it's, it's not easy to get in and out of Bork. He's virtually got to play a deep screw to get the white to come over the green spot and screw around two cushions. Otherwise he's going to have to avoid the bought colours off one cushion. This is tough. I think he's going to kiss the black. That was a poor shot. Twenty. Yeah, tried to check it with right hand side, got too much on it. That's why he collided with the black. Good pot needed now. And got 21. Wonderful pot and nicely on the blue. Yes, excellent pot this. He wants to be a little bit careful here, Paul. You know, I would suggest really bringing the pink into play here. Purely because, as we just mentioned, you know, he tried to flick the red away from the pink there. That's a little bit unlucky. It could have turned out in his favour if he's got an angle ahead to get on the black. Mm, not really. He can force it around two cushions. So he tried to just flick the pink out to make this into an opportunity to win the frame. It's still not that opportunity why the pink and black are safe. 27. He was just a fraction away here. Half board he played off that red. Yeah, but having missed that cannon, it could have gone all wrong. And as you say, he was nicely on the, the red. And that's, 32. That's helped. Just released a couple of reds. You still have to play for the blue. But if you have a look on that shot now, we can see that the pink is now available into the left corner pocket. And there you see the table time. Couldn't be more even, could it? Yeah, it's a surprising stat, really, when you consider that Ronnie led quite a lot in this match, and balls potted. Actually, Hunter's actually now potted more balls than Paul. Five in total. And he's 7-5 uh, behind. Scored more points than Ronnie, and he's 7-5 behind. Yeah, but he has made three century breaks, hasn't he? That'll work. That'll do it. Every time. 28. You can see the point we were making in commentary, that until you get pink or black in open 30. play, I mean, this has been really hard work. This break is just coming up to five minutes. Is any on 38, purely because the white's just been going all around the table. Well, I think he's made a big error there. He's on nothing. He's on nothing. Had a good angle on the blue. Perfect. Just tried to stun it over. And stunned too far. He's looking for the safety now. He was a little bit careless, that. He'd be disappointed. Yes, I agree with the safety he's playing here. It's an easy safety shot to get rid of the one on the black spot and get in behind the green, but at this moment in time, if Ronnie does get in, he'll have the same problem as Paul. Black at the wrong end, the pink covered. Can pot the one just to the left of the pink 
and played as a shot to nothing. That's what he'll be taking on. Yes, that could be a, another mistake from Paul Hunter there. He should have had this cue ball tight against the balk cushion. He left Ronnie a chance of a pot here. It's a dangerous thing to do. He hit it too thin. That was certainly half a chance. taking this red on. This is dangerous. It's a dangerous shot that because it's such a thick, thick potting angle that if you miss it you're going to be very lucky to get away with it because the red's going to come back up the you. table with the cue ball. Got away with it he has. Now well, just want to take the one on just to the left of the pink. If he does, he's going to have to get the cue ball at least where the green is now to make this a shot to nothing. So that's the line of the cue ball. If it's hard enough, it's a good shot to nothing. That's excellent. I don't think Paul can see the potting angle of this red. And if he can't, he's played a good safety shot there. Well, Paul, I think, can pot it. Yes, he can. Not sure to avoid the cannon on the pink, though. Yes, he was relying on good fortune there. Bound to cannon One. into red and pink. <coughs> Most important thing, though, as you will agree, Willie, he potted the red. And now he can decide what he does next. You would think the most obvious thing is just roll to the brown. Leave the cue ball near the bought cushion. And with a 39-point lead, really put the pressure on Ronnie O'Sullivan in this frame. Would you not fancy the half-ball pink, John? Try and put the pink safe and just get the white in balk? No, I'd rather just roll to this brown. Black. Well, he's playing the black, so maybe he's trying to put the black safe. Paul Hunter, one. Yes, he's uh, made a pig's ear of that one, but you could see his point, John, couldn't you? A big colour safe. Well, there's two reds on the side cushion. For me, he rolls to the brown, leaves the cue ball tight under the bought cushion. He's got Ronnie in trouble. <coughs> Left Ronnie that long pot. It was a tough one. Joe's watched Ronnie many, many times, and uh, yes, Joe, that's you. And uh, I'm sure that uh, she's seen Ronnie come from positions where he's not uh, playing at his best. He's just going through a spell at the moment where he's not quite uh, doing it at his best. But this is due to the pressure that Paul Hunt has put on him. big difference in the pot success rate from this afternoon to the evening. Look at Ronnie O'Sullivan. He was 95% and at one time 97% this afternoon. It just shows you when you put a bit of pressure on your opponent like Paul Under has done, you can start missing anything. was a terrific pot and once again he's not on a colour but if you get the red chance of playing good safety and in this case a good snooker and the way the reds are situated a good snooker here could create a chance for Paul to win the frame next visit Paul Hunter won but he's not got the snooker 
Well, this could go wrong because John Ronnie's going to have to screw back off this red into Bork and he's going to have to cannon into the other red. The second red could go anywhere. Now, where's the second red going? It's OK, it's stayed at this end of the table. We'll settle for that. See, there's no problem getting the white back in Bork here, but the, the second red, that one that's on the move first, is lucky it kissed the pink. Well, so far this evening, when Paul Hunter has been in a position where he doesn't fancy the safety, he's been pulling out some tremendous pots. He'd be a brave man to take on the red that's on the right-hand side of the table. That seems to be the only red he could play the pot. It's risky, but as I say, that seems to have been his game plan. If I can't get safe, pull out the good pot. And boy, what a pot it was. And is he on the pink? He is. That's the frame winner. Seven. Eight. Yes, it was a pot where he was virtually saying to himself, I'm either going to win the frame here or possibly lose it. It's amazing the difference this afternoon. O'Sullivan in the six frames that he won made a break of 80 or above. This evening his highest 14. break has been 34. And that's not good enough. 15. Twenty-one. So there you see it, 61 ahead, 59 remaining. Remarkable performance this from the young 22. man from Leeds. 6-2 behind at the start of the evening session, 7-2 behind. And now, only one behind at 7-6. Twenty-eight. 29. Ronnie O'Sullivan only had long pots to go at in this frame. He didn't really get in amongst the balls. 35. A lot of that was due, due to the 36. good safety of Paul Hunter. And of course, when Ronnie did play a good safety, Paul was knocked in some tremendous 36 pots. and the frame. That pink didn't matter. Paul Hunter, Paul Hunter wins another frame. He's now pulled it back. Ronnie O'Sullivan is out of the arena with a lot to think about. Paul Hunter, though, still trails by seven frames to six. What a transformation in fortunes. At the top of the agenda for Hunter in frame 14, drawing level. O'Sullivan's desperate not to let that happen. One. He made certain if he wasn't on the black, at least he'd be on the pink. What an asset to be able to use your left hand equally as good as you, your right. Oh, he's playing the black. It's a finished contact. He's got to play it more or less dead weight, but it's, it's well off the cushion. And this now is a chance for Ronnie, Eight. and let's see what he can do with it. This will tell us, because the last few frames he's not had much of a chance. Any questions? Snooker at bbc.co.uk Or any opinions Nine. on what's happening so far? Yes, I was watching the opening couple of frames at uh, the hotel before I came over to do this commentary stint and it was amazing how the emails are coming through saying Ronnie's the best thing at snooker since Tiger Woods, he's different class, he's this, that and the other. 
Those 16. emails have stopped a little bit. Ronnie, in my opinion, is the best player when he gets at full flight. Stephen Hendry beat Ronnie twice this year when playing, when Ronnie was playing like he was this afternoon. It's not as easy these days. There's so many good players. <laughs> Wasn't Ronnie's 17. intended red, but he comfortably got the plant. But we do enjoy you sending your texts in and opinions in. We've had over 6,000 this evening. Thank you very much for your comments. 22. 23. It's a little careless, John. Yes, he wanted more of an angle on the blue than this. Twenty-eight. He's making hard work of this. That's hard enough playing left-handed without being hampered by the blue. Yes, I was going to say, I didn't fancy that at all. Ronnie O'Sullivan, twenty-eight. Well, that was a big ask. Should have got the rest there, surely. I know he's very good left-handed, but look how far the, the tip of the cue was from the bridge hand. All the stretching. And left-handed. Careless. Not a lot of discipline One. there. And he's gifted a chance yep. for Paul Hunter. And he knows that Paul Hunter's taking them. Bad decision that. Yes, the bad shot was the red before when he didn't get top side of the blue. That's where it all started to go wrong. So on his high break this evening, still 34. <coughs> Eight. Sixteen. Ball Hunter sixteen. Well, surprising miss from Paul Hunter. And some people sell down, please. Feel it more than the players when they miss a the ball. He looked in good position there. And he's let Ronnie off the hook. not made many mistakes this One. evening, Paul Hunter, in fact, hardly any. But Ronnie will be desperate to punish him for that one. And stretch his lead again. Yeah, some people at home, if they didn't realise how much pressure is involved with finals of major championships, this is one of our Seven. biggest, the Masters at Wembley. Under pressure, you can miss anything. Eight. Fifteen. Well, everybody's feeling it, but hopefully Ronnie's a little bit 16. more relaxed than his supporters as he tries to make the most of this opportunity. Still a bit of work to do, it's not that straightforward. Yes, he's going to need virtually three Second more three. reds and at least two colours, obviously, to get over the winning line in this frame. And if he does, it'll be a very relieved Ronnie O'Sullivan because he's given Hunter three chances already in this frame. So red colour red. And Ronnie O'Sullivan should have stopped the rot. 31. Well, would you believe it? 
A red colour red away from an 8 6 lead. It's getting tense out there. Wow. Never expected Ronnie to miss that. He's perfect on this red. Now this is the key shot here. He's got to pop this red, get high on the black to try and bring those two reds near the top cushion into play. This could be the key to the frame. Nine. Has he got the angle? I think just. Cannon the two reds and hope you develop them. No, it's no good. 16. So it's just a safety. But a few moments ago, I'm certain Paul Hunter was sat in his chair thinking, well, I've lost this frame. He's back in it. With him being 27 points behind, he'd ideally like to bring the red into play near the middle pocket. The easiest safety shot off is the one nearest to him. But he's got to put Ronnie under pressure by having reds in open play. So, okay, he can't gain an advantage with that safety, especially if he goes in off. Well, we think it's working 16. for him. But he's now put Ronnie under pressure with this safety. That's good play. <coughs> good play, but risky play. I thought that cue ball was going to go in the corner. Well, I don't think Ronnie has left anything that will tempt Paul Hunter to go in for a pot here. Just trying to get that cue ball back to the ball cushion. Call it too full. Don't know whether Ronnie can go for the pot here and avoid the red near the top cushion. No, he couldn't. He didn't play the pot there. He played the safety. And a good safety it is. That gives Ronnie advantage. Yes, and Paul's only safety here is a, a thin one off this red on the side cushion, but the double kiss comes into play if he plays that. This frame is not over. A 27 point lead with 51 on. No problem. Whoever pots the next red, you would say, is favourite to win the frame. Now, the thin safety shot, got to be careful of the double kiss. I didn't imagine he'd take the pot on. That was dangerous. But that's been his game plan all evening. If he doesn't fancy the safety goal for the pot, it was a tough one. Ronnie, one. back to a colour and one more red needed. I don't think there'll be many heroics with this red Eight. trying to get cue ball a little bit closer to the black. Whatever happens, he can play a snooker as long as he pots the red. Nine. So he's come out nicely. <coughs> if he can't get onto the red, he can play the snooker, so it should be frame over. Sixteen. Yes, he, he slipped up, Ronnie, but it didn't cost him. 17. And I'm sure it would be an extremely relieved Ronnie O'Sullivan to have won this frame after giving Paul Hunter at least three 24. chances. We possibly could have maybe should have been all square at seven all, but what we do know 26. now is Ronnie O'Sullivan has stopped the rot and is now leading eight frames to six. 29. Thirty-three. 
38. Thirty-eight and a three. Well, two small breaks, Ronnie breaks O'Sullivan. of 31 and 38. Normally that wouldn't be enough at this standard to win the frame, <laughs> but it is for Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's actually stopped the rot. He now leads 8-6. Yes, Willie, breathing space for O'Sullivan, but Hunter's far from finished. He's at the table as we pick up the match again in frame 15. the ball on the way down John and this is on the way back he's put side on the cue ball and he misjudged it it was a very fine shot he had to play Let's have a look again missed it going trying to put a bit of side on you see and he just misjudged how much the cue ball was going to move with the side could be costly. One. This wasn't easy. Paul Hunter was a bit fortunate not to have left anything a little easier than that, but Ronnie decided it was a chance to go for the throat and try and win the frame at this visit. Reds are nice. Blacks what? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, black spot's covered. Pink spot's open. He'll be reluctant to pot the black for a few reds if he if he's uh, got the pink in play. Seven. He doesn't really want the black to tie any reds up. Eight. The black spot's covered. I wonder if you'll try and move the red off the black spot here. Well, that was a clever try. There was so much value in playing that shot, almost bound to be on the red over the corner. And look at this, he tried to release the red off the spot. It's still okay because the black may still pot. 15. assume that he was that interested in position on the colour he took his eye off the pot there's no other reason he could miss that putting a tracer right hand side on that can cause it whenever you use side as we saw on Paul Hunter's last visit to the table on these super fine cloths things can go wrong what? he's on this black Well, he's just putting a tracer right hand side on the cue ball and he's pushed into the red but he should be allowing for that of course this is a thin one but there's a good chance here for Paul he'll have to cannon another red to hold the white probably on and off the cushion Good pot, but it's not over yet. We've got a little bit more work to do. Either red, I don't think will avail perfect position. Eight. The black can't be touching the red that's occupying the black spot. And it goes as close as it can without touching in a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. Yes, it's gone awkward, this. This is a brave shot to take on this. What a pot that nice. was. Yep. <coughs> if he doesn't get that, he's lost the frame. Brave shot. Well, 
Boy, well, he's showing some courage above and beyond the call of duty here. He really is. I mean, this afternoon he was bombarded by Ronnie O'Sullivan. And the two frames he won, he made two century breaks. Which was an amazing stat. But you thought, well, he can't keep hanging on to Ronnie in this form. 15. And he's come out this evening and turned it all around. Never ducked out of any shot which you thought was the right one to play. 16. And now this is a good chance. Yes, from what we've seen so far this evening, you would have to suggest that Paul Hunter's favourite to win this match. Ronnie has to improve. We know he can improve, without doubt. But he's going to have to improve, and quickly. Yeah, just 22. one or two careless shots, slipping into Ronnie's game. But that will happen when your opponent is putting you under pressure. And Paul Hunter has played exceptional snooker this evening. And Ronnie knows that. And it just makes every time you miss, 29. of course, it's underlined in black ink. Because every time you make a mistake, it becomes very costly. 30. Yes, I don't know what it is about mid-session intervals at uh, the Masters 36. for Paul Hunter, but he certainly becomes a better player in the evening. Thirty-seven. I just think he's one of those players, it gets a point in a match, and it has done in the three finals that he's been in here at the Masters, that it seems the fact that he's behind and he's almost at the point of no return, that he just relaxes and plays his normal 43. game. And probably prior to that, he's a little bit tense of thinking what might be and I don't want to play bad. And then as soon as that, that point arrives in the match where he can relax and let 44. the QR start flowing through, he proves what a tremendous talent he is. But favourite to win the match, Willie. I don't know about that. I mean, as a spectator, I'd love to see it go nine each, but... Well, whatever happens, we're being treated to a feast of snooker. The point I was making, John, I mean, Ronnie O'Sullivan has made one break over 30 in this evening. Trust me, he won't win the match if he doesn't make more than 30 in the next few frames. 51. Fifty-two. After this black means red colour red. Fifty-nine. Still a possible sixty-seven left on the table. He's come a little bit straight. Well, just enough angle. 60. And he can get this black, and he may be able to develop the red just above it. He's looking for one more red after this black. And he's played it beautifully. He's on the red. He'll win the frame now. 67. 68. <coughs> 75. 76. Already, Paul Hunter has made three century breaks in this match. 82. Well, he might struggle to 82. make one here. What a marvellous break. All the pressure that's on him. Well, he might make one here. 
He's got the double. <laughs> Eighty seven. Eighty eight. Well, this is sensational stuff from the young man from Leeds. Couldn't 95. get close to the yellow. Good pot needed. Good pot got. And nicely on the green. 94 century break coming up. One hundred. Fantastic. One hundred and four. And hasn't this Wembley Conference Centre and the Masters brought out the best in Paul Hunter? Twice a winner. And still in there fighting. Oh. Well, he screwed it off Ronnie the pitch. It didn't six. matter. Ronnie oh, O'Sullivan must think he's got a limpet stuck to him. Paul Hunter keeps coming back <laughs> for more. He still trails 8 7. Hunter just won't accept defeat. Now it's getting really serious. Too thick with the safety. First chance, Ronnie O'Sullivan. That's enough now, thank you. <coughs> yes. Problem was, tight under the bolt cushion, as I keep saying. Makes it hard. <coughs> now that was a One. good shot from Ronnie. Just having a look to see where the black's going to go. It won't go on its spot. So he's going to have to... The thing is, the red that's almost occupying the black spot will be available after potting the black. That's for certain, because the black's going to go to the right-hand side of that red. So I'll pot the red just above the black. Eight. Well, I'm sure he can pot it. <coughs> just have a look at an alternative. But if he can pot that red by the black, go up for the blue, and he's cleared the black area. Yes, he definitely played for it. I think he was a little bit disappointed that the cue ball didn't come a little bit higher. But it could work out in his favour. Because now the black's uh, going to be clear Nine. at the moment in both pockets. <laughs> Not guaranteed to get good position here. Needs a good shot. And off the three cushions. He needs to be high on this red so he can just stun it in for the black. If he comes low on it, there's no advantage, but he is 13. high. <coughs> so he'll be able to get rid of the red. There he is, perfect. Be able to get rid of the red next to the black very shortly. I.e. now. 14. Just playing for the loose red. I mean, there was a time when we might have seen Ronnie 21. pop that black and try and cannon into the cluster. But I think this situation is getting a little bit more serious than that. I'm sure he'll go into the, 22. the bunch of reds. Maybe now if he's got the right angle. Yes, he'll be going into them now. Is he on anything? Will this red pass the pink to the left middle? 29. If it doesn't, he's on nothing. And if he isn't on anything, that's a little unlucky. Yes, he just tried to arc the cube. Well, there you can see from that picture, it doesn't appear to pot. He tried to arc the uh, black a little bit more into the pack, and he just didn't talk it late enough. It came, the screw took hold too too soon. He wanted to kind of miss that front red. But he just caught them. 
Once again, he breaks Ryan down on Sullivan, less than 30. 29. Yeah, that is the bottom line, Will it? He stopped scoring when he's getting in. Well, no one's going to be leaving earlier this evening. I promise you that. Well, I'd have been unlucky if the black had gone in the pocket. And some people still can't look. But it was a good safety shot. I mean, if the black had gone in, it'd have been seven points for Ronnie, and he'd have probably put Paul Hunter back in to play this safety. Ooh, where's the red going over the middle pocket? <coughs> It's not going to be easy, but it's a possibility. I always think when I look at the, the picture we show you, these look so easy, these reds. And yet, if you were down behind the cue ball playing this, I'm telling you, it's a very narrow angle into the middle pocket. And the more pace you put on the cue ball... Such a tough shot, that. And as I say, it looked easy. But sometimes maybe the camera does lie. Yes, I think Rowan here said, I'd have fancied him to pot that. But the fact that he played a stun shot made it a lot more difficult. He's not left uh, anything straightforward. The red in Bork is the one he'll have to play, but the white have come down another two inches. He'd have had a straightforward red in the left-hand corner. If this was this afternoon, this would be a certainty. That's a good pot, considering he's not queuing very well this evening. One. He'll be pleased with that. That might give him that little bit of confidence he needs, because he does need some. Eight. Yes, it was a lot more <coughs> difficult. A lot easier than the difficult pot that Paul Hunter played. Nine. And now a chance round the black. Just cannon off the black into that red. Leave the red to the opposite corner. Well, can't believe he's played it like that. Well, I'm with you, John, 16. as you know. I'm a big advocate of Ronnie's brake building. And you could have called your, that shot up 100 out of 100, and that's what he would have played. I am so surprised he played it that way. Well, I don't think he played it that way, will he? I think he, he just put a quick one in there, and, and he's got too much bottom <laughs> on the cue ball. He didn't cue that well at all. That's why he's finished here. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 16. He's to put that red safe. He knows he's 45 in front, but it was such a perfect angle on this black. And the, the, the red that John uh, Virgo circled, he just probably just snatched at it a little bit here. Yes, he didn't, he didn't cue nicely. But obviously he didn't play to kiss the front red. Well, he's amazed, and I'm amazed too. No, I think he played to cannon the red that I circled, will he? But, as I say, is you say, he just snatched it a little bit. It wasn't the smooth Rolls-Royce Q action we expect from Ronnie. And that's why he lost position. Now, OK, he's got a good safety. He's still favourite for the frame. And if he gets one more chance, you feel certain he'll take it. But he had a chance, and a good one, to clinch it at that visit. Yes, he's got a shot to nothing on this red here. The one just to the left of the pink spot. He can play it playing ball. It'd be nicely on the yellow should it go in.
Well, this is a good safety shot from Paul Hunter. <coughs> Excellent shot. A tremendous pot that was from Romy. One. Unbelievable. Pressure green coming up, but if he knocks this in and gets on the next red, that good pot could set up the frame winning chance. That kind of shot is a shot that the modern day players play Four. a lot more fluently than the players of a few years ago. They aren't used to like potting those off the Ball flows into middle pockets, but very, <coughs> very tough. Uh, Sullivan made that look easy. And let's not uh, make any bones about it. He has struggled this evening. Eleven. Eighteen. Nineteen. The applause which signifies they know that was twenty six. All that leaves Paul Hunter needing snookers. Twenty seven. And Ronnie going within one frame of his second Masters title. First to ten. Didn't do it in one visit. 33. What a tremendous opening red he got to set up this frame winning 34. opportunity. And amazingly enough, he's going to win his third frame of the evening. And as his black goes in, it's his highest break this evening. And to win three frames, that's quite amazing. 41. I'm sure Paul Hunter will concede and that uh, Romeo Sullivan. Sullivan now, he just w needs one more frame and he won his second title. It hasn't been brilliant but O'Sullivan is now 9-7 in front. Yes, here's the 17th with O'Sullivan, 32 points in arrears, looking to apply the killer blow. Everybody on the edge of the seats, why not, what a great match this is. And Ronnie played that like a shot for nothing, but it isn't. He stuck the red. He probably thought the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. He missed the pot by a long way, kissed another red, and came on for the right corner. One. Another chance for Paul Hunter. Maybe better than the last one he had. Seven. Eight. Fourteen. Still two or three loose reds that Paul can play on, so he won't be going into them at this moment in time. And the pack's fine to go into now after black. It wasn't before. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Sorry, pots of black. All 62 points in front. The two reds in the open with colours would be enough. He doesn't need any of those reds that are all congested in the middle of the table. 30. Two reds, two colours. And he's still in there. 31. Has he got the angle on the pink? He desperately needs an angle on the pink. 
didn't sound too good, did it? I think he may just have the angle he did. He just had enough angle. So it turns out, well, he just the red needed. Yes, he's. Uh, he'll be glad to know that because he's virtually dead straight on this red. Can't do an awful lot with the cue ball. Just on and off the cushion. Thirty-eight. Now the pink will open the reds. The crowd know throwing snookers. It will be all over. And now the pink's gone in and he's developed the red. Ronnie O'Sullivan will not be coming back to the 44. table in this frame again. It's going to 9-8. 45. What a remarkable young man this is. He really is. Battling qualities of... 52. Well, high proportion. Fifty-three. Just didn't get that cannon right. But won't matter. Fifty-nine. Only, well, maybe you'd like to make another century break. Already made four. Maybe you will make number 60. five. Yes, he made five in the match when he was 6-2 behind against uh, Fergal O'Brien and went on to win. Seventy-six. Eighty-three. Eighty-five. Eighty-eight. He has to have the perfect angle to get nicely on the blue. He needs to be close to this blue so not to make the screw shot difficult. Ninety-two. And that's just about perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was with it, but it just bounced a fraction more. Well, here's the family. There's the future wife. Must be very proud of his performance and his battling qualities. Incredible. And what's impressing me most of all is that he's not doing it by just pinching frames. He's doing it in style. Very hard to just put the scoreboard completely out of your mind. Get in. Tremendous. One hundred century break number five. So once again, Paul Hunter refuses to bow. We're coming up now to a big frame as Paul Hunter trails by nine frames to eight. After a ten star to the eighteenth frame, we find O'Sullivan 31-14 ahead. Still trying to cross the line. Yes, he's done well there. This rod may pot, but it's tough to get back onto a colour. Well, I think he can play it into the left corner pocket. I'm not saying a shot for nothing, but he can certainly get the cue ball back up to the balk end. Good pot needed, because it's a blind pocket. Cue ball, object ball, and the pocket are not in your eye line. No, too thick. As I say, he was always going to go back to the ball again. And he's not left the red. Well, I'm not so sure Ronnie being 17 in front, whether he should play safe off this red. I'd have liked him to keep that there because uh, that 17 point lead was quite big. 
There's been a lot of defending going on in this match. And there's one of the country's leading ones, John Terry Chelsea. In my humble opinion, possibly the best centre-half in the country at the moment. But I'm sure Mr Virgo sitting next to me might have something to say. No, I think uh, John's going to be an England regular for many a season to come. Have you got any defenders at Leicester, Willie? Well, uh, ones that are not in form at the moment. But I expected you to come back with the Rio Ferdinand there, but of course he's not playing at the moment. What a defending, what a shot he's going to have to play here to... But you see, the reason I, Ronnie should have left that red where it was, if Paul plays a good safety shot here, the frame's open again. See, now the frame's open again. With the red on the side cushion, Ronnie was still favourite. Doesn't really matter well. It doesn't really matter about that going in. I don't think Ronnie can get Ronnie spot red and get onto a colour. A red on the cushion now would be in Ronnie's favour. He got down, had a good look at the potted angle. Can't fancy it because the potted angle on that red on the right hand side of the table takes the cue ball into the three reds just below the black. So if you're taking it on, you've got to get it. And there's still that big target of yellow, brown and blue to try and snooker behind. that is hampered high he's going to have to play what we call a Chinese snooker queuing over a ball makes the chance of putting a little bit of unwanted side on a bigger possibility so he could hit this too thick or he could swerve it too much he has to cue this perfectly yes he's being asked lots of questions Paul Hunter in this frame he keeps coming up with the answers and this is another big ask now to get this safe. <coughs> well Coming played. Again. And Ronnie O'Sullivan, as he was coming to the table, immediately said, shot. He knew how difficult that shot was. There is a chance of a pot for Ronnie, but it's fraught with danger. Didn't take it on. Good safety. Great length. Yes, that's as good a safety shot as Ronnie's played for quite some time. The frame's just coming up for 25 minutes. But there is now some tension in this one. Well, another excellent safety shot from Paul Hunter. His safety's been top class in this match, and I think that's what's kept him in it. Very impressed. Yes, yeah, so and once again, the tap on the table from Ronnie. So, sportsmanship of the highest order. Such a close match. Nerves afraid, worry, tension. And yet, still got time to congratulate your opponent on playing a good shot. Excellent safety shot. And there you see, little tap on the table. And it was a tremendous safety shot from Paul Hunter. Well, there's no easy one here to get back into safe. If he plays to pot the red that's in open play, there may be a gap to go in between red and black and the cue ball back into Bork. But it's one of those, if you get the pot, you get the gap nicely. If you don't get the gap, well, he's not playing it, so we'll never know. Just plan to leave the white at this end and force Paul into playing a better safety. Doesn't want that white to bounce. 
Paul might take this on along the top cushion. He played to leave that white tight on this cushion. Yes, overhit it. Big shots, every one of them now, trying to level this match. One. You wouldn't think so, the way he nonchalantly knocked that one in. Eight. Well, he's gone favourite to win the frame, but yellow Nine. is going to be the key ball. Well, I think favourite to win the frame, will we, under these circumstances. 16. I wish the game was that easy when I was playing it. Dear me, he's got a lot to do here. He's got the two reds in the open, but as you say, needs a good angle on the colour to get on the yellow. He needs precise positional shots all the way along the line here. 24. I don't know whether the blue will pass the brown. That could make a difference the way he plays the shot. I don't think he probably doesn't if he's playing for the black. Yeah, I think it does go, John, and I think he'll play for it off the last red. He'll certainly play for blue or green off the last red, or should do. But the big problem okay. is going to be the yellow. 32. If the brown wasn't there, I'd agree. Formality, as you see, the blue does go. But the only pocket he can play for the yellow, it appears, at the moment, is in the green pocket, as everybody is on the edge of the seats. Yes, he'll be trying to get on the blue here to either be able to get onto the yellow naturally or certainly be able to move the yellow into play. It can't get any closer than this. Anything low on the blue, he can bring yellow into play. He's played for the blue. Now he needs an angle on the blue. If he's straight on the blue, there's not a lot he can do. Well, he's got the angle. Now, can he play the little run through and just nudge yellow and brown and leave the yellow for the right centre pocket? It's difficult to say from where we are. But he's going to have to run into the yellow here. Can he develop it into a potting position? Not quite. He needed to get through that brown. I think if he thought if he played it with a bit more pace, he'd hit the yellow as well. 38. He needs the yellow, the green and the brown. And the yellow to the right centre is very, very tough indeed. But this to level the match. He's got it. He's got it. Still needs green and brown, but the yellow was the big shot. Just the brown needed. 43. Wants it to bounce off the side cushion to be certain. Well, this is incredible. Every time he's won the Masters, he's won it 10-9. If he's going to win the Masters again this year, it will be 10-9. What bottle this 52. lad from Leeds has got. And he still looks as calm as a cucumber. That was one of the best 58 breaks I've ever seen under pressure. Ronnie O'Sullivan played a full safety. Hunter cleared with 58 to pinch it. You're right, we're all square, 9 all. He can't believe it, and I'm sure, nor can you. Thank you. Thank you, quiet now please, 19th and final frame, Paul Hunter to break, quiet please, give him the best of order please. Just before they came to the table, 
Paul and Ronnie shook hands and I'm certain they said to each other, best of luck. There's got to be a loser, but what a feast of snooker both players have entertained us with today. And it is today, Ronnie stole the honours this afternoon. And Paul, of course, has shown remarkable resilience to come back this evening. And there you are. Little smile from both players. As I say, there's got to be a winner. Who it will be, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess. nearly the shot of the evening he's not on the black though it'll be a safety shot thank you what a shot to take on under pressure you can see the yellow but he's got to make this safety he's losing in the safety battle at the moment this evening he's got to put Paul under it well surely surely he's not trying to clip the black in I nearly fell off my chair there Ronnie O'Sullivan won. I'm trying to get. Well, there's a Ronnie fan. They've had some entertainment this evening, haven't they? <laughs> well, much too thick. Much too <laughs> thick. Left a chance for Ronnie. One of the few poor safety shots that Paul has played in the last few frames. Yes! Hit it solid, but hit it too hard, and that's why he's not on the black. May have the yellow. As a reserve, just got into the cue ball too much. Well, this is a case of do I or don't I? Do I take the blue on or do I play safe? I think if he plays the blue in the middle, I'd fancy him to pot it in the corner, I'm not so sure. <laughs> sure is. That's unlucky. Far for the kiss on the red, that would have been perfect. He's unlucky there. What a brave Six. shot that was, Willie, wasn't it? Both players, you just got to take your hat off to them. You know, that's just great belief in your ability to pop balls. But this is tough. Well, that's fantastic. For me, Seven. that was harder than the blue jump. Well, I think Ronnie now has said, I can't shake him off. I'm going to have to beat him off with a big stick. Too wide. It's too wide. But it dropped in. It looked as though it had stopped there. But it just dropped 14. in. Gravity took over. I don't think he's on a red. Settle down, this please. Please. Well, you have to say now it's gone in. He's unlucky not to be on a red. What drama we've got here. I wouldn't like to be one of the supporters of either camp. I'm glad I'm a neutral at a time like this. 
To risk playing a cut black into the pack at this stage was tough, but once he's played it and it's gone in, it's quite unbelievable he's not on a red. And the safety's tough because if he runs off down the right hand side, he's bound to leave this red near the pocket. So Ronnie's just looking, you see, the brown's in the way to leave it right in the jaws. <coughs> Paul Hunter may have a chance at a potable red after this shot. It's Key gets it behind the green. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 14. Well played. Did well there. Paul Hunter may be forced into taking the long one on, the one to the left of the blue. He's actually looking at the one to the left of the blue and trying to screw the cue ball back down towards the yellow. That would cover the red over the pocket with the blue, but you, <laughs> this is one of those shots. If you hit it sweet, you can get it. If you don't, it makes you look foolish. Yeah, I think the cross double on the red near the left-hand cushion. He's just got to judge the weight of this. He could get behind the yellow, but he needs a good length to find the bought cushion. He needs a good length. The pink's going to help. The pink's going to help. And what a length he got with that safety. Magnificent. Yeah, this beautiful shot at first glance. I didn't think he could see that red enough to play that. He's played it lovely. This has got to be so thin. Ronnie O'Sullivan's back more against the wall in this frame than it has been throughout the match. He's played some good shots already in this frame. Well, he can't get through to the red near the right corner. He's got a straight red. The red to the right to the blue. If he knocks it in, he's got automatic position. But the way the balls are spread, if he misses it, well, what would the cost be? Fantastic. One. Well, words can't describe some of the balls that this young man's potted. Under pressure. Remarkable. Yes, he even developed that into almost a shot to nothing. The fact that in potting it, he just screwed the cue ball back that two inches just to Six. cover the red in the middle with the blue. Yeah, but as you say, well, it's all right when they go in the pocket. But when they're a bit wide, then the cue well, ball seven, runs yep. a little bit different. <laughs> that was an unbelievable pot there. Well, I don't know. Well, I know that they're supporting. There's still a lot of work to do. This is the deciding frame in a major tournament, the Masters at Wembley. Paul Hunter has already won it twice. 12. Can he make it a hat-trick? And as we've already mentioned, John, twice at 10-9. What a hat-trick that would be. Three 10-9s. I don't know how his father, Alan, has got that much hair because it must be hard work kind of watching his son keep winning 10-9 at the Masters. Where did he get all that barnet from? Oh, has this gone wrong? I don't believe it. It's 13. Well, I think it went wrong when he played the blue. He played for the red and it was near the pink spot. He knew this was dangerous because it was a red that could get in the way and his worst fears come true. And he won't be taking any undue risks here. So it's only a safety shot to play. What a chance he's missed. He yes, can cut thin off the pink on the left-hand side and virtually guarantee getting the cue ball in behind the yellow, but he might put the pink safe. He doesn't pink. really want to do that. He wants to keep this pink in play. So he's played the shot. Now, has he put the Paul pink Hunter safe? 13. It might not help him. Both players have had a reasonable chance to score 40 or 50 points. Not a 
bad safety from Ronnie. There's a red that will cut into the right corner pocket, but it's not one you'd want to take on because it's not a shot for nothing. Well, Paul's come around to look at the angle, and if he does play it, it's impossible to miss the reds or the black. So an alternative will be what he's looking for. Another sensational safety shot. Boy, oh boy, is he producing... He's like Houdini at the moment. Well, this is sometimes when stats tell fibs. If Paul Hunter's not played different class safety to that, it's amazing because, for me, he's outplayed Ronnie in the safety department. I'm saying that, Ronnie's played a cracker there. Yes, I think those stats will probably be all the match, of course. I think it's the last few frames where Paul's been asked so many questions and just keeps finding a safety shot from somewhere. And he's found a pot from somewhere there. Where's the cue ball going? Not Button. in the pocket. And a chance of the yellow. Shh. Oh dear, this is a tough yellow, this cutback. If he avoids the kiss on the blue, he's going to be on the choice of red. He's got to miss that blue. He's missed it. And he's on the choice of red. Could get three or four reds and colours here. Three. Well, Ronnie sat there and wondering... Oh. What's going to happen in the next few minutes? At the moment, amazingly enough, Paul Hunter has gone favourite for the match. Don't ask me how. 11. When he was behind 6-1 and 6-2 and Ronnie O'Sullivan playing, well, just sensational snooker this afternoon. <coughs> but this lad never gave up hope. Last couple of frames, he's been faced with almost impossible positions. He just played 12. the worst positional shot there, John, didn't he, the shot before? Well, it was just one of those things. He just misjudged the bounce off the cushion. I know what you're saying, and that's why he came too straight. He's still got a chance of this black, and you just know he's going to take it on. It's whether he can miss the yellow to get on the red. And he's flicked the yellow. He's still got a chance of a long red. 19. And he can actually play this as a shot to nothing. He can just screw across the face of the red that's above the black. Beyond the black that it goes in. And won't leave anything easy. Unless he misses the red and sticks it. Twenty. Great pot. Great pot. Still a big ask to win the frame and match at this visit. The way the, the balls are situated. But once again, under pressure, will he? Doesn't he pull them out? 27. And he can play this red in such a way that he can leave the half ball black and the two reds under his cue there. He'll be able to bring those into play after the next shot. 28. Too far. He may have to move the red out near the pink. Stop talking, please. Decided to drop on the loose red down the cushion. But if he's straight, it could be tough because the red and pink are in the way to get on the blue. 35. That could be costly. He may have to rely on a bit of luck whether he gets the pink into play here. Yes, that's an option, isn't it? But the problem is with this type of shot, the more pace you put into it, the more likelihood you're not going to get the pot. Nothing Ronnie can do now. He's got to sit there and hope that Paul Hunter doesn't win frame and match at this visit.
and it's a tall order to do so. Yes, he's unlucky. 36. That's almost guaranteed end of break, apart from possibly another five points. And in this situation, I don't think the five points is worth a lot. <coughs> the only thing he can do is possibly play, pot the blue, get the five points. And but I, would he, would you want to bring a red into play, John? Well, the only red he could play safe off is the one that's near the right middle pocket. You wouldn't want to play safe off the two reds stuck together because you're bound to leave one with a chance of a pot. So Paul's thinking about refusing a pot here now. Now there's a couple of things he could do here. He could get one of the other colours safe. He's 34 in front. Get the green safe maybe, green white ball. in behind the brown. Makes him strong favourite. Paul Hunter, 36. It's a big lead, 34 points, there's 51 left on the table, but with green safe, brown safe, red near the cushion, which Ronnie doesn't appear he can get through to, and he wouldn't be guaranteed to get this safe playing off these two reds. Oh, but a tremendous shot. Tremendous shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan to keep his hopes alive. If that had gone wrong, he'd have lost the match. What tremendous courage. Both players are showing under pressure. Needs to avoid both blue and yellow with this safety. Has he avoided them? He's avoided the blue. Has he left the red on? I think he has, but... I can only see probably two reds and colours, but he can get back in the frame with two reds and colours. <coughs> Wide. And he's left it. He's left it. This is a match-winning chance now for Paul Hunter. Shh. Is he on a colour? One. 35 points in front. He needs a colour. And one more red for a remarkable victory. I think he can play the blue slow enough to hold for this red as well, John. And he's the kiss. He's got the kiss. It's over. Well, unbelievable Six. performance. Twice before he's won the Masters 10-9. He's going to do it a hat-trick of Seven. times. He trailed 6-1. He came into the evening session 6-2 behind. It went to 7-2. Surely there was no way back. He never gave up. He's made five centuries in the match. 14. Remarkable performance. And Ronnie won't be coming back, John. He's bit his tip off. 14. Well, Ronnie O'Sullivan offers his hand in congratulations. And congratulations we must give to Paul Hunter. What a remarkable, brave, courageous performance as he wins his third Masters title. Once again, by 10 frames to 9. A cheque for £100,000, the Waterford Crystal Masters Trophy, and the title of this year's Masters Champion goes to Paul Hunter. Not since Stephen Hendry recovered from 8-2 down to beat Mike Hallett 9-8 in 1991, has the Masters final witnessed such a fight-back. Paul Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. O'Sullivan denied. Hunter, King of Wembley. Once again. <laughs>